Good morning, dear students. Today, I am going to begin with the new topic, and this time, this is a poem on his blindness. This is a sonnet by famous poet John Milton. This is the image of the famous poet John Milton. Now, let me tell you about the poet. John Milton was born at Bread Street, Chipside, London. He is a renowned English poet. He is a versatile writer who wrote in English, Latin, Greek and Italian language. He wrote at a time when there was a religious flux and political upheaval. His notable poetic work is Paradise Lost. Now, let me tell you about his other poetic works. His other poetic works include on arriving at the age of 23, 1631, Lycidas, 1737, poems of Mr. John Milton, both English and Latin. Then we have his sonnet, When I Consider How My Light Is Spent. Uh, this is the poem that we are going to study and the title here is on his blindness. The next poetic work is on the late massacre in Piedmont, Paradise Regained and Samson Agonists. So these are his famous poetic works. So John Milton achieved name and fame and recognition in his lifetime. Now let me tell you about the poem On His Blindness. On His Blindness is a sonnet. It is written in a Petrarchan style. Do you know students that there are two forms of sonnets. One is written in Shakespearean style that is called Shakespearean sonnet and the other is Petrarchan sonnet. Now this one is written in Petrarchan style. In Shakespearean sonnet we have three quatrains and a couplet and here in Petrarchan sonnet the poem is divided into two parts. The first part of the poem is called octave. It has eight lines and the second part is called cystic. It has six lines. In this poem on his blindness, John Milton expresses his anguish about his loss of eyesight in the first eight lines of the poem and ponders seriously about his account of life that he has to present God. Now, not knowing what to do at the time, he has lost his eyesight and he is in a helpless state. He is worried about God's reaction on the judgment day as he would not be in a position to reply when asked about his true account of life. So he questions, doth God exact day labor light denied? So he questions, does God really need man's labor when he has lost his eyesight, when his eyesight is taken away by God? And he finds answer in the second part. Let us see what, uh, what he has to say here. In the second part, we see that his inner wise comes to his rescue and makes him realize that God does not need any gift or sacrifice from man. Hence, 
he need not worry, question and doubt ways of gods. This is how he reinstates his faith in God. Let us see how does the poet raise the doubt, how does he complain and how does he find solace in the mysterious ways of God when he is in a helpless state at the point of his life, at the time of his life when he has lost his eyesight. Now he is inclined to serve God, but he is unable. Let us see what the poet has to say in this poem on this blindness. Before we move on to the discussion, let me read the text of the poem. On His Blindness by John Milton When I consider how my light is spent before half my days in this dark world and wide, and that one talent which death to hide lodged with me useless, though my soul more bent to serve there with my Maker, and present my true account, lest he returning chide, doth God exact day labor light denied? I fondly asked, but patience to prevent that murmurs and replies, God doth not need either man's work or his own gifts, who best bear his mild yoke, they serve him best. His state is kingly, thousands at his beating speed, and post o'er land and ocean without rest. They also serve who only stand and wait. So let us begin the discussion now. When I consider, consider means when I think seriously, what about how my light is spent, how my eyesight is taken away? Before half my days, when I have ate to live a long life, now when my eyesight is taken away, I am in a helpless state. And how does the world appear to the poet? Dark and white. So this world appears to him dark and white. Why? because he has lost his eyesight and he finds himself in a helpless state. Now, he wants to serve God, even in this condition, but how? In his time, how he should serve God when he is turned blind, when his eyesight is taken away? Let us see what does the poet has to say. And that one talent, which is a death to hide, lodged with me useless the poet says that i have one talent now what is this talent that the poet is talking about yes the poet is talking about his creativity in writing poetry his creativity in writing a variety of documents now this talent is lodged with him useless why because ultimately once he is turned blind what will happen to him? He will find himself in a helpless condition and one day he would probably die. So, after death, he won't be able to write anything. So that one talent that the poet has and that talent is of writing poetry, it is within him. But it is useless now. Why it is useless? Because he has lost his eyesight, his vision. But even in this condition, though he, he, he has lost his eyesight, he says, my soul more bent. Bent means to inclined. Though my soul more bent to serve therewith my maker and present to account. He says that even though he is in a helpless state now, at the time of his life, when he has lost his eyesight, his mind is bent. He's, he wants to serve God. He wants to present the true account of his life. And 
there is a belief in Christian religion that on the doomsday, on the judgment day, what will happen when the world when the world will be destroyed, then the God will make these dead bodies to wake from their coffins and then he will ask them to present the true account of their life. Now, when this time will come, the point thinks God will rebuke him. Child means rebuke. Child means to scold. God will scold him. Does God exact day labor light deny? Does God really need man's labor in his helpless state of health and mind? That is the question that the poet raises here. Does God really need man's labor? Even in this condition, he foolishly asked. So this is how the poet is raising question he is complaining against God that God has taken his eyesight and he is unable to understand that how he should present his true account of life that he is unable to do anything now so in such a state of mind when he is unable to do anything he questions he doubts God's ways does God really need man's labor even in such a condition when I have lost my eyesight and the greatest worry that the poet has is this that how should I present the true account of my life now I only be able to write anything so this talent of writing poetry is useless it is lodged with me but it is useless and probably death would come and he won't be able to do anything but before death come before death comes he has to do some noble work and that is he wants to write he wants to serve God he wants to praise God through his writing but he is unable to do and he foolishly asked the God how should I present the true account of my life now now this is how the poet raises questions doubts and complaints about God in the first part of the poem now let us see what happens but patience to prevent that murmurs and replies now in such difficult condition of life we need to maintain patience so the point maintains it and soon the wise within replies to him means he suddenly realizes and what is this realization let us see in the next part of the poem God does not need either man's work or his gifts the poet the inner vice the inner vice of the poet tells him that God does not need does not need any gift any sacrifice from man so this word death this is an archaic use of does so here the poet says the poet realizes that God does not need man's labor God does not need any gift any sacrifice then how can he serve God let us see God does not need either man's work or his own gifts who best bear his mild yoke they serve him best now this realization comes to the poet and he realizes the people who endure, the people who suffer and endure his mild yoke, that is mild burdens, mild responsibilities that they have to carry even in the difficult situations in their lives. So today you see that in this pandemic situation, our doctors, nurses, policemen, they're working. So they are bearing this mild yoke, that is the responsibility that God has shouldered. 
that God had asked them to carry out. So the poet says, the uh, poet realizes that God does not need man's gift, man's uh, work. The people who just carry out, the people who just carry out the work in their day-to-day -day life, even they serve him best. The people who, who carry the responsibility in their day-to-day -day life, they serve God most. So the poet says, the people who serve and endure the mild, mild burdens, they serve God best. His state is kingly. Whose state is kingly? God's state is kingly. So how that God would need man's labor, his gifts and sacrifices. So even today we see in our society uh, that people go to churches, temples, mosques and they make offering to God. Does God really need it? Of course not. And this is the realization that comes to the poet when he asks himself and his inner voice comes out and says, do not worry. Don't think that God needs your labor or your work. Even if you carry out whatever you have to do now, even after that you will serve God. His state is kingly. Thousands at his bleeding speed and post over land and ocean without rest. Thousands of the people, they are at the service of God. They are at the ocean. So these people who are post over land and ocean, they are working day and night and they are at the service of God. They also serve who only stand and wait. This is the most uh, striking point here. This is the most important thing that the poet realizes. They also serve. So the people like poet who are, who are in a helpless state. They also serve who only stand and wait. So here in the second part, uh, of this poem, the poet realizes that God does not need any uh, gift, any labor from the man. The only thing that the poet has to do now, he has to humbly surrender himself to God. And he should no more question, he should no more doubt the ways of God's. This is how the poet reaffirms his faith in God. Now let us move uh, to the conclusion. In this poem, John Milton talks about his mental anguish over the fact that he is turned blind and he is unable to serve God through his writing. So the poet wants to serve God, but he is unable. Why he is unable? Because he has lost his eyesight. And he complains that God has taken his eyesight. And God has taken his eyesight at such a time of his life when he has eight to live long life. And then the world, appear, then the world appears to the poet dark, full of difficulties, problems and challenges. So he complains about God as he is unable to write poetry due to his blindness. He wants to serve God through writing poetry, but he is unable. He doubts and questions God's ways and wonders how he should serve God in his helpless state. Though he expresses his grudge, at first a sudden realization that comes from within makes him to understand the ways of God and he realizes that God does not need any gift, any labor and sacrifice from man. Just submitting oneself to God with a lot of patience is also a service to him. So this is how this is how the poet reaffirms his faith in God 
and his mysterious ways and surrenders himself to God. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing that I noticed here uh, in the last line, this is how his faith. So uh, there is an error in typing. So uh, the word has to be uh, read as this is how his faith in God and his mysterious ways gets reaffirmed and he surrenders to God. Thank you very much.